We're speaking with Paul Zimniski. He's the Executive Vice President for Global Innovation Partnerships at DMI, the Dairy Checkoff Organization. He has oversight of the traditional food service partners, but also fluid milk companies as well. Welcome to Dairy Business, Paul. Uh, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm excited uh, to talk about uh, partners and uh, how we support the farmers. Back uh, when the, the COVID epidemic pandemic hit us, uh, we knew that DMI really pivoted in order to focus on a, on a variety of new tasks. Uh, kind of what role have you worked with your checkoff partners in that uh, since then? Yeah, I mean, you know, our, our normal goals with our partners are obviously drive sales, build trust with the partners and just, you know, background, we partner with McDonald's, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut and Domino's. And, you know, we realized right away that, you know, you had disruptions in the food system from the need uh, to, you know, you know, normally you had 37 million people in the hunger system up to an anticipated need in the mid 50 million people. So how could we ensure they're getting um, nutrition through the hunger channel, you know, like Feeding America and the local food banks. Number two, we also looked at schools and schools and the disruption that was occurring in the school environment where, again, 30 million kids get breakfast and lunch combined um, on either assistance or, or subsidized or free through the school system. And how do we ensure that milk and dairy are flowing to the kids to keep them um, nutrition? And then we, we also just looked at, we formed teams, we called them emergency action teams to look at hunger, schools, and then two other areas were food service and retail. You know, from a retail perspective, we said, how do we minimize disruption and with the relationships we have, you know, whether it's, as you guys may have seen, you know, you had people were restricting, you know, hey, only two gallons of milk per person and things like that. And so we worked immediately on the retail side with a lot of the retailers to inform them that, hey, the, the suppliers can uh, service the product, take down the signs, and in fact, you should promote dairy in this time of need. And so that was some of the things we did on the retail front. Sure. On the hunger front and school front, you know, just real quickly, we worked with partners to, you know, like a Domino's to donate products across the, the network. You know, they, they, I think they talked about millions of slices that were donated, you know, about 200 pizzas per franchisee, and they have over 7,000 franchisees donating pizzas to their local um, you know, food banks and pantries they have relationships with. Even in school districts like Miami-Dade, where um, Domino's work with the district to provide um, pizza, and, and, and as they were working to identify you know, how they were going to keep kids fed. Uh, you know, those are two just examples of how we pivoted. And, you know, from a hunger perspective, we looked at how do we provide excess product into the hunger channel? And, you know, whether it was working with Kroger and some of the processors to, um, you know, I'll call it, or um, dairy producers to uh, donate milk into Kroger, who then donated processing time, who then do donated milk into the, the food banks and their relationships across the Kroger banner network. So there was a lot of immediate reactions with our teams to really help support different uh, activities at the channel level. And then specific to those partners, as, as you talked about, you know, first and foremost, we're like, how do we, uh, keep volume moving through the food service network. You know, you, as you look at the, what happened immediately with food service, you, you have different types of food service restaurants. You know, you've got the fine dining, they call limited service, they call those, you know, the sit down type of restaurants, whether that's a local family restaurant or like the bigger sit down chains, you know, like a Texas Roadhouse or um, like an Applebee's. Two more, we, we partner with the quick service restaurants. You know, they, they deliver, you know, drive more than 65% of the sales in the restaurant industry. When you add those players up, the quick serve and fast casual and the, the quick serve fronts like your McDonald's, again, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut. And, and what we did is pivot to, with them as looking at the pizza champ, pizza segment. I mean, if you look at food service, about half of the volume of cheese goes through food service, right? And then 25% of that cheese goes on pizza. And so we're like, how do we work immediately with the pizza industry to help fill volume and keep milk flowing? And, and so we, we partner with everything from uh, Pizza Hut to add incremental promotions. You know, they partnered with Jimmy Fallon to give away pizzas to, to graduate. Yeah, how, how, did, how, did that, uh, how did that Jimmy Fallon and Pizza Hut promotion work where there was a, a huge number of pizzas that were gonna be given to, uh, 
to school kids to graduating seniors. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. You know, what we, we, we said as we talked to the partners, we're like, how do we still be relevant and engage with consumers in this time? And, you know, you, you looked at these unfortunate situations, right, where you had this whole generation of kids graduate waiting and they don't have their prom, they don't have their, their normal graduation. And so, uh, you know, we work with Pizza Hut to say, how do we, you know, engage the consumer? And the idea was to donate a half a million pizzas. And why, why it was big for the industry and them was, you know, they executed that within seven days, you had a half a million people sign up for the program and you had to join their loyalty program to get your free pizza. Well, you know, from, from Pizza Hut's side, from key results, they had their biggest sales week in eight years after that promotion, eight years. You know, they had half of the people who signed up were new to the, their Pizza Hut rewards program. You know, when you, so when you think about the repeat from that, if you can get you know, you know, 200, 300,000 people sign up, repeat purchase, you know, and start to buy and continue to use pizza. That, that is, that moves a lot of volume for us. And so again, proven results, highest sales week in eight years. And you know, we also work with other partners like Taco Bell. We put together with the Taco Bell, um, I'll call it delivery kits, you know, which, you know, the, these delivery meal kits around Cinco de Mayo had over 11 ounces of uh, dairy in, in it. And it, and so, you know, normally people go into Taco Bell, they're either dining in or they're going through the drive through We help them pivot to delivery focus and, and put those meal kits together. And again, moving a lot of dairy. You know, normal taco is about you know, 0.25 ounces. We've helped with innovation to deliver much more than that. And then, you know, meal kits when you're at 11, that's like 10 times the amount of normal dairy that they're getting when the consumers are going through the drive through So because it can help them feed a family or friends um, under Corona. Sure. You know, Speaking of Taco Bell, uh, we've seen uh, happily a couple of new menu items uh, featuring cheese, and we understand that DMI, you, you've got one of your crew uh, in their kitchens helping develop some of these products. Yeah, we. I mean, you look at dairy. We view our role as like an ideation incubator to to create new growth platforms on behalf of the farmer. You know, you've got great suppliers out there. You've got great brands out there. Great quality. What we try to do is find new ways to grow dairy. And so Taco Bell is a perfect example. We've been working with, uh, our, we have on-site product scientists at Taco Bell that help come up with new product concepts that fit within their operational system. And, and in what, about four years ago, we came up with some strong dairy beverage concepts, but Taco Bell also doesn't have refrigeration space. You know, they have limited refrigeration space, so they can't bring in a lot of refrigerated milk, they, they can't bring in creamers and things like that to build, execute some of the concepts we've done. So we worked with a confidential supplier in the Midwest Dairy Research Center to develop a shelf-stable dairy creamer type of product that Taco Bell could use right in, into their production line. And uh, you know, it, it was a great, item. they just launched a product called the Pineapple Whip. You know, it launched right around Memorial Day and it was one of their strongest selling beverage products launches ever. And, and what's big for that, and again, what we look at is how do we create catalytic growth opportunities for dairy? You know, you imagine the food service networks now, you know, I mean, there's, you've got places like Shakes, but imagine replacing cream in. You, that shelf stable creamer can go everywhere from hotels to office complexes to, you know, the grocery store shelves to go right after those non-dairy creamers. And so that was in the mindset of how do we proprietary launch new technologies that, that, that can do that on behalf of the farmer. So that's a perfect example of you know, four years of science effort and, and, and you know, first product launch off of that had tremendous in market results. That's a, that's a fantastic opportunity if we can go after non-dairy creamers. Uh, we'll, we're, we're kind of running out of time in this conversation, but <clears throat> Paul will, uh, check back with you on how that uh, how that product is being rolled out beyond the Taco Bell uh, brand. Yeah, last fun fact, why, you know, just right now, if you go to your Taco Bell in your neighborhood right now, you'll also see the benefit of our science. Uh, you know, one of our on-site scientists will just help them commercialize the grilled cheese burrito. And that they call it uh, Mike's Magic Paper, uh, where, again, how do you bring new experiences with, with dairy? And, and, this concept scored well for a couple of years and we've actually cracked the code on how do we bring an experiential um, uh, burrito with cheese on the outside. 
And so again, think about all the cool things you can do, putting cheese on the outside of different products in their operation system. So I would encourage everybody to go to Taco Bell and you'll see another example of how we get consumers to experience dairy in new ways. Well, that sounds very exciting. And we appreciate you taking a few minutes to bring us up to date. Uh, we've been talking today with Paul Zimniski of DMI. I'm your host, Joel Hastings for DairyBusiness.com.